Top stories from around the island. To the point. Without the fluff. Puerto Rico headline news. Please subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell notification. Hello and welcome to Puerto Rico headline news for April 21st, 2020. This is your COVID-19 update for Puerto Rico and also the morning edition of this channel. Uh, along with discussing the latest figures provided by the Department of Health, uh, we'll also consider uh, a co uh, some information that I ran into uh, that kind of reveals the fact that the rapid tests are just not so rapid. So we'll take a look at that and see if uh, that might be the case. Uh, if this is your first time here, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell, uh, like the video, and please don't be afraid to share this content as well. So let's go ahead and get into the uh, the latest headline from El Nuevo Dia for today, April 21st. Uh, basically, it mentions how he, um, the, the latest victim uh, to die from the coronavirus is an 84-year-old woman. Uh, so this increases the death toll to 64. So let's go ahead and get into this article. And it mentions another coronavirus patient residing in the Maya West region died of the disease, uh, the health department reported on Tuesday. Given this, the number of deaths associated with COVID-19 increased to 64, while confirmed cases increased to 1,298 with uh, 46 additional confirmed cases that were reported. Uh, of that total, uh, 667 are men and 631 are women. Uh, the report continues to say the deceased person was reported as an 84-year-old woman from the Maya West region. This death is considered a confirmed case as positive to COVID-19. The demographic registry did not report uh, deaths and this is what was uh, said by the Department of Health in a statement to the press. In, in other words, what this means is this person was not tested uh, for the uh, coronavirus prior to dying, but since she had the symptoms uh, that could have been uh, COVID-19, uh, they've reported it as a COVID-19 or coronavirus uh, death. Uh, the Department of Health continues to report or reported yesterday that a 66-year-old man from that same region in Maya West died uh, from the virus yesterday. Uh, so both persons, the one that died yesterday and the one that was confirmed uh, today, were from the Maya West region. Before we move on to uh, the rest of the article, here's a graph just to give us a good idea um, of what's going on here in Puerto Rico. As of March 8th, we can see here in that uh, orange line, uh, pending cases, we see we do see a slight drop uh, of the test results that are uh, pending or that are being waited on for, for results. And then the red line gives us the confirmed cases. We still see that, um, that trend upwards, although not as steep. And then we have the, the black line that uh, represents the, the amount of death so far here in Puerto Rico. Now, continuing with the, with the article, it mentions here that according to the Department of Health Agency, 41 of the new cases reported were processed in private laboratories uh, around the island. Four came from the Department of Health Public uh, Laboratory and one from the Veterans Hospital. The total number of COVID-19 tests carried out in Puerto Rico amounted to 11,848, of which 8,789 have come back in negative uh, and 1,751 are still uh, pending results uh, and 10 uh, remain as inconclusive. Um, now, in regards to this number, before we move on, uh, the amount of tests that are carried out. So we have a total here of uh, 11,848 for today. Uh, this number doesn't quite help us uh, unless we analyze and take a look at the amount of tests that were taken yesterday. So yesterday, they and I'm going to continue to report on this number because it gives us some additional information and look into what's going on. On Monday, they had tested 11,633. Today, it's uh, 11,848. That's an increase of just 215 tests in one day. So uh, the average has been about 200 
uh, to 250 on average a day of tests that are being conducted. Last week, uh, the Department of Health had uh, provided some information to the press saying that they they were upping up the amount of tests to 1,000 a day was their goal. Um, and apparently that they have not reached that goal yet. They've only tested 215 people as of uh, yesterday. Uh, so that's something we want, we want to keep in mind as we analyze this information. Going back to the article, San Juan continues to be the municipality with the most reported cases, having 184, followed by Guaynabo with 74, and then Bayamón with 62. 63. Meanwhile, the group with uh, the age group between 50 and 59 is the one that reports the, the most confirmed cases with 277 uh, as well, uh, followed by the 40 to 49 age group with 246 people. And here we see the uh, the map of Puerto Rico. Uh, the municipalities in red are all those municipalities that have confirmed cases so far. Uh, so we see that pretty much the entire island uh, is ha- has um, confirmed cases. Uh, and we see the, the darker red shades, and these are the concentrations, higher amounts of confirmed cases. And we see the metropolitan area, uh, the San Juan uh, region, Guaynabo, uh, that has the higher concentration of confirmed cases uh, throughout the island. Uh, Vieques and Culebra still have not reported any confirmed cases so that's uh, some good news and still uh, 365 of those confirmed cases are unknown Uh, in other words they they don't know from which municipality uh, they are from I also wanted to get into the uh, the article that I translated uh, from the El Nuevo Dia uh, the one that I reported on um, in this video I want to head down to the comment section a lot of information can be gleaned from there. Um, so there's a particular comment here regarding uh, the rapid test. And I'm going to go ahead and, and translate it as well. Uh, and let me see. It's this one here. Uh, this comment here by Ernesto. And obviously it's one comment. Um, you know, it, we can't give it too much uh, credibility as of yet, but it's something to think about, look into, and see if this happens to be the case with uh, many people that are getting these rapid tests done. Essentially what he says here, uh, he's saying, my dad had the test on April 6th, and it was not until April 20th that they called him for the results. Thank God the primary doctor was treating him at home because in the hospitals, until the results were there, they couldn't do anything. Because of the weight for my dad, his pressure uh, almost killed him. It rose so high. Uh, The tests are taking too long to get the answers. And they are the rapid tests uh, from the San Juan uh, Lab lab, uh, Quest. Uh, This this is creating too much anxiety for people who are waiting, especially if they are older. So this is kind of concerning in regards to the rapid test, the fact that it's taking a lot longer than expected. And and again, this is only one comment. Uh, If you are watching this video and you may have some information in this regards, please include it in the comments. Uh, This way we can compile some data in that regard as far as uh, how long these results are taking for people. Once they go in for a rapid test, how long is the wait in reality from what they promise to what the uh, the truth is uh, or what the actual results are and uh, so we can get a better idea on these numbers and, and certainly it would be some information that the Department of Health uh, should deem important to know as well as they report the numbers to to uh, to the people here in Puerto Rico and then when it comes time for them to make any type of decisions regarding the lifting the possible lifting of the lockdown uh, all these numbers and data should come into play as well at the end of that same article I just wanted to to show you some of the top headlines uh, that are being recommended by the uh, El Nuevo Dia for you to take a look at it's uh, it's very interesting here you see the recommendamos we recommend the Department of Health is evaluating eliminating the requirement 
uh, to process or to get this rapid test done. Uh, so they're evaluating the possibility of not having to get a referral from your doctor. What they were doing is they, in order to get a rapid test done, you had to show up with the referral. So you have to see your primary doctor and then he would have to evaluate you and then deem it necessary uh, based on fulfilling all the requirements or fulfilling the symptoms of the coronavirus, then you would get this uh, approval and then you can go and get the rapid test done. So the Department of Health is now uh, considering eliminating that requirement. So um, uh, it's a possibility if they do that, that the 215 tests that they're doing on a daily basis could increase, obviously resulting in better information and better data uh, for them. Uh, the following news over here says the Department of Health has not been able to use the, stu the volunteer students for contact tracing. So a few weeks ago, he had Lorenzo Gonzalez, the secretary of the Department of Health, had released information that they were working and releasing their program for contact tracing, and it involved volunteer students. But as of now, it appears they have not been able to do so. I clicked on the article, read a little bit and uh, they still are not doing contact tracing. Uh, here's another article, COVID-19 looks like it's slowing down in Puerto Rico. Obviously it's gonna look like it's slowing down if enough tests are not being conducted. If only 215 tests are being done a day, it will appear as if it's slowing down. Increase those tests to a thousand a day and certainly it'll change their view on what's going on here in uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, so let's see what else was here that, that was pretty good. Uh, here's another one. Uh, the, the data collected by the contact tracing is not being given or not being provided to the municipalities. That, that's, that makes sense. If, if they haven't launched it yet, then the municipalities are not going to get any data uh, as a result of any contact tracing that uh, Certainly, it's not being done, so they're not going to get any data, and that's what's being reported here. Um, and uh, let's see here. Uh, here's a so the uh, Secretary of Health um, met with the Institute of Statistics for Puerto Rico to try to fix their data. They reported a few uh, days ago that the they had been reporting uh, incorrect data on the information portal and to the press. Uh, so he met with the um, Institute of Statistics, and then right now over here, this is what the um, conclusion of the department or of the Institute of Statistics is saying. They anticipate that the errors will not be able to be corrected in the uh, data provided by the Department of Health. So not such good news. He met with the Institute of Statistics. His conclusion after meeting is they find it it's going to be not possible. It's not going to be possible to fix those uh, errors in the data. Uh, obviously, I can't cover all these articles. I uh, just thought I maybe that's what I do. I go into these articles, uh, discuss the headline, go into a little bit, and uh, cover as much information on a daily basis. So we'll, we'll see how that works. Uh, so that's it for uh, the your COVID-19 update for today, uh, April 21st. Thanks for watching. This is Puerto Rico. Headline News.